गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी गुड इवनिंग गायत्री गुड इवनिंग मैम वेलकम मैम गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग विदुषी मैम गुड इवनिंग छाया मैम हम यू या फाइन मैम इतनी ठंडक में वेरी वेरी कोल्ड टू डे कोल्ड बट स्टिल सी अवर एफिशिएंसी वी ऑल आर अगेन आफ्टर द कॉलेज वी आर अगेन अवेलेबल हेयर यस वी आर अवेलेबल इट इज नाइस टू सी यू है गायत्री से बहुत बातें होती है गायत्री बहुत बातें करती है बहुत डिस्कशन होते हैं बट फर्स्ट टाइम फिजिकली आई हैव सीन यू फर्स्ट टाइम देखा है गौतम बुद्ध यूनिवर्सिटी एंड सी आर लैब्स एंड वर्क आर स्टूडेंट्स आर डूइंग गायत्री से डिटेल पता चलते हैं कि बहुत अच्छा है वहाँ पे लेकिन बट कॉलेज का तो आपको सीन पता ही है I can understand it is very yeah. hectic out yeah. there और बहुत yes, मुश्किल हो yes. जाता है और कहीं जाना आना मूवमेंट मतलब है तो बहुत कुछ पाइपलाइन में लेकिन बस टाइम की बहुत ज्यादा गुड इवनिंग मैम गुड इवनिंग मैम वेलकम मैम इवनिंग मैम वेलकम मैम मैम Ma'am, participants are left yes. to just uh, just put one message on WhatsApp group to join fast. Yes, ma'am. I'm just doing it, ma'am. Actually, this is the sixth day, and students yes. also get tired. <laughs> so they talk. Yeah, and Saturday too, so they get tired. But ma'am, uh, is still. Uh, मतलब यस्टरडे इट वाज 43, 43, 44 स्ट्रेंथ वाज देयर। यस, आई हैव पार्टिसिपेशन क्वेश्चन से सेशन मतलब दैट यू वुड सी द सेशन द पार्टिसिपेशन इज ग्रेट मतलब वी वर नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग की इतना आई हैव बीन जॉइनिंग योर लेक्चर्स हाँ या गायत्री टोल्ड हाँ यस यस यस्टरडे आई मिस्ड इट बिकॉज आई वॉज इन वन ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटीज फॉर दे रिक्रूटमेंट प्रोसेस Okay, okay. So after that, I came very late, so I was not able to join that session. And I have asked Gayatri to share the things what all was done over there, <laughs> because it is always interesting to know. The the thing was that my lecture was supposed to be the first in the beginning, so I prepared accordingly, you know. Uh, and then it uh, turned out to be almost last. So I wanted to hear what all other people are, you know, covering. Uh, yeah, covering. So that it is not a duplicate repetition. Ha, uh, repetition now. So then the students and the participants get bored. Ah yes 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 yes. So you have to be very methodological. So I've been following your lectures and what all has been done. Security ah, has yes. been covered. Laura Van has been covered. So मतलब बस ये fortunately or unfortunately आपका अभी भी last है और उस समय भी hands on भी last ही हो गया है. Yes. <laughs>
हेलो सी जी मैम गुड इवनिंग ऑनलाइन का लास्ट सेशन है ना ये ऑनलाइन का लास्ट सेशन हेलो क्वेज टुडे यस 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 टुडे इज क्वेज मोनिका मैम ये भी ग्रुप पे डाल देना है ना कि टुडे इज द क्वेज सो ऑल हैव टू अटेंड दैट आल्सो यस ऑलरेडी डन ऑलरेडी डन ठीक आई बी शेयरिंग इट एट नाइन Shall we start, ma'am? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. We should start now. My screen is visible. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. सेकेंड स्पीकर एंड शी विल नॉट बी एबल टू गिव द सेशन सो बोथ द सेशन विल बी टेकन बाय डॉक्टर विदुषी शर्मा 
I welcome Dr. Vidushi Sharma. She is uh, uh, from School of ICT, Gautam, Gautam Buddha University, Greater Noida, India. Uh, I want to introduce Dr. Vidushi Sharma. Uh, so, Dr. Vidushi Sharma is MSc and MTech in Computer Science and PhD in Computer Science. She had guided eight PhDs and 50 plus MTech dissertations. She has published 55 per, uh, plus papers in index journals and more than 30 papers in international and national conferences, including papers in IEEE Transactions of Industrial Electronics, IEEE Internet of Things Journal. She has published two books, one in Taylor and Francis publisher and other is Lambert Publishing. She has also, also published 14 book chapters and currently she is working as HOD CSE in School of ICT, Gautam Buddha University, Greater Noida. Her research interest includes data science, sensor networks, IT applications and management, and IoT. So I welcome Ma'am Vidushi Ma'am for her session. Over to Vidushi Ma'am. Thank you so much, Gayatri, for giving me such a nice introduction. Right now, I'm in the Health Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Uh, I uh, don't update my CV very often because we are not leaving jobs anywhere. <laughs> so we stick to, okay. we, are, we are here since last 13 years or 14 years and we continue, we happen to continue over there only. Uh, so uh, right now I'm the head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Earlier I was the head of the Department of Computer Science Engineering. My area is quite interdisciplinary because uh, we have been doing networks. Networks come in computer science as well as an easy. So that has been my domain area and my thesis was also on that only. So um, starting with that, um, my presentation was supposed to be the first one uh, on when the uh, FDP started. So I had prepared that way, but then I custom tailored it to put the requirements of the participants because a lot of authors, a lot of uh, speakers have spoken about so many other things. So I've omitted out, in fact, in my presentation also, I'll be omitting certain portion of it. I'll share my presentation. Yes, madam. I hope it is visible. Yes, madam, visible. Keep it in slide mode, madam. I'll keep it in the slide mode. Uh, integration of wireless sensor network and IoT for agriculture, wireless sensor network architecture and its protocols. In the domain area of wireless sensor network and IoT, uh, I'll be talking about the network architecture and its protocols, which come in hand in the agricultural sector. Excuse me, keep it in slide mode, ma'am. It is a slide mode only? Full no, slide mode. Full slide. Slide show. Slide show. Yeah, I have done a slide show only. I hope it is... Not visible, ma'am. Ma'am, it is not coming in slide Just show Just slide mode. opened, but uh, that is not in uh, slide mode. Slide but mode. I am clicking on the slide mode only. Ma'am, uh, slide show, uh, have you clicked, ma'am, slide show? Yes, I have clicked the slide show only. Okay. There may be some issue. Anna, please, uh, oh, take okay. a minute. Okay, no issue. And again, uh, share it. I'll do. I'll just put it on the slideshow, and then I'll. Uh, I don't know. Why is it the problem? Got you some bandwidth issue, maybe there. Ma'am, yeah, no. No, no. Presentation. You click, ma'am. You click on presentation. Okay. There, presentation is there. There is a presentation mode. I'll do this. I'll do the entire screen and then I'll uh, put it on. But just at the bottom, there is a bar, so you can try on that. Uh, bottom right. I know this. Way. I've been using it. Now is it first? Is it? Yes, yeah, yes, 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 ma'am. Now, now it's perfect, it's okay. it's perfect. Actually, I shared the uh, tab and uh, window. Oh, yes, so that's why right. right. it was not taking up. So yeah, I'll just yeah. share it's my whole screen. Fine, but now I'm not going to anybody. <laughs> yeah. 
It's fine. Uh, we say the most profound technologies are those that disappear. They weave themselves into the fabric of everyday life until they are indistinguishable from it. And this is a very important aspect of it. Any technology which is very important, they become a part and parcel of our lives. They weave ourselves, they weave themselves into our uh, life so much that we cannot distinguish whether it is technology or this is a part of our life. For example, we are driving a car, we are doing an auto gear, or we are moving on to an auto drive. So many sensors come into the picture and they maneuver us, they guide us, they tell us the path. There's so many things we are, during the Corona time also, we have been using a lot of devices to test. So there also certain sensors were applicable. IoT was applicable, reports we were seeing and a lot of reports were coming online whereby we can manip we can find out what is the scenario right now of that particular disease so these are the this all this thing is happening throughout the world because of sensor network and iot so in today's talk we are going to talk about the wireless sensor network the basic part of it and then i will move into iot how sensor network has actually become a part of iot we will discuss various protocols which come into play in IoT and sensor network, which help us achieve the, our objective of providing the agricultural IoT. And in the second uh, lecture, we will talk about various applications of the agricultural industry, which are based on IoT and how various challenges of agriculture we are able to mitigate. As we all know, this is a very simple uh, node architecture that a sensor network has to have a memory, a communication device, a controller, a sensor, actuator, a power supply. This is a very basic form of a node architecture. But this is a very important part of a node architecture because the whole gamut of sensor network and IoT network revolves around it. These are some of the sensors which we use image sensors are there, ultrasonic magnetic sensors, are vice sensors are there. So, and uh, when we talk about the controllers, there are several controllers. See, the, whole, the, the controller, basically the purpose is for processing. But since the sensor nodes, when we talk about sensor nodes, they can be of various sizes. They can be as small as your smart dust. So when you are talking about sensor devices which are as small as smart dust the controller portion may be there may not be there it they may be just a communication channel but if there is a controller it has to be somebody which has to be very small which which should have a processing power which can do only the task for which it is assigned to so a lot of dsps field programmable gate arrays and asics are available right now and uh, some of the uh, microcontrollers we are having in our lab are msp 430 at mil uh, at mega and uh, and we have to remember one thing why do we have to study these controllers is that iot and sensor network are application based the type of application in which you are you are you are trying to formulate you choose and the requirement of application decides the microcontroller dsp or fpga or whatever you want to take up so there is no custom tailored product for an application. You have to sense an application, find out its requirement, and then find out what all, what all components will come into the picture. We have communication devices, and we use elect uh, electromagnetic radio frequencies. We may use light. We may use ultrasound waves. So we may use, we have options of so many communication devices. We also have transceivers, transmitters, and receivers, which which come in various ranges, which provides a lot of is of uh, the frequency range, their capability of the channels which they are able to adopt, the data rates, the ranges, uh, their performance is also measured into certain. They they have they adopt various modulation techniques. They have various uh, different gains, and they may be uh, their power consumption levels may also be different. If you see a white uh, uh, paper of any uh, sensor node, you will come to know that they are, ha they are having different sleep modes and wake up modes. They come in various modes. They may be 
uh, the active mode, sleep mode, a buffer mode, and other modes. So depending on the requirement, you take up those modes. Uh, by modes, we, I want to say sensor modes. Again, there is a challenge in devising which operating system we are going to work on. It all depends on the type of node which we are catering to. If our node uh, node is compatible with C hash or C plus or whatever, we are going to take up that modes. So these are uh, some of the platforms. TinyOS, NSC, NS2, now it is NS3, TOSSIM, Berkeley modes. So all these modes are available. So these are the sensing devices, which is the most important component of starting and culminating our sensor networks. Now, a typical sensor network, before we move on to IoT, consists of various sensors, which we can see in the green points. Now, these sensor nodes, they are only gathering the data. When they gather the data, they transmit the data to the relay node. They may also transmit the data to each other. They may also transmit the data to the relay node. And finally, the center, the relay node transmits the data to the center. So this is a multi-hop sort of a communication. To understand it more better, the whole network maybe comprises of these nodes, which are node 1, node 2, node 3, and node 4. These nodes are capturing the data. And here the data is being transmitted into a multi-hop scenario. Now, this multi-hop scenario will be something like uh, the data is being transmitted over here, then it is goes to here, then it goes to here, and then this gate gateway over here is the GPRS gateway. But we can have any other gateway over there. It can maybe uh, enabled with any other technology. And the data is then transmitted to a server. From the server, it is being accessed by our through the web interface, there can be a web interface or there, these systems may be directly connected to the server and getting the data. Now, this was a very simple sort of a wireless sensor network. Moving on to a very com a more uh, complex sort of a network, we may see a particular city or we may see a particular scenario whereby a lot of monitoring is happening in a particular city. A shift monitoring system is working over here. A wireless sensor network, uh, various wireless sensor nodes are capturing the data. Some machine monitoring is going on. Animal monitoring is going on. A vehicle monitoring is going on. So when we talk about vanets, you have one of the speakers that talk about the vanets also. So these um, monitoring is going on. Even uh, there, there was a speaker uh, who talked about Mahindra vehicles and then uh, how the sensors and IoT and everything is enabling it and providing is more computation. All this data goes to some of the wireless data collection networks. So when these data is being ca captured by these networks, medical monitoring variables uh, are being um, taken care of. <coughs> so this network may provide these wireless information is being collected and this is going to the PSU base station terminal. These base station terminal are connected to the base station controllers which are doing the pre-processing. And there are uh, database centers where this data is being stored finally. So this data is being stored in these uh, database large uh, storage centers. And once this data is stored, this data may be again uh, distributed into various distributed networks. So uh, this can be stored and it, it can be distributed from here. This was a data acquisition network, how to acquire the data. There is a data distribution network. So this data may be lying at some of the uh, database centers or at the base station controllers, whereby using various technologies. See, there is a technology which is the first mile and the last mile. The first mile is, the last mile is the back moon network and the first mile is the initial network so it may be wireless it may be uh, wired whatever it may be so so this whole tech data has to be transmitted to that technology we may have, uh, access this uh, data through a pc a cellular phone if a cellular phone is there so we use a, a cellular network from there 5g 4g we are connected to a net uh, uh, node board or a we are having a hu roving human monitor. We are accessing the data through uh, Wi-Fi or the first mile will be Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth. Another scenario we need to understand 
to understand the whole how, uh, uh, sensor network and IoT playing into picture. That is, there are homogeneous and heterogeneous networks. Homogeneous networks are basically those networks where uh, we have um, similar types of sensor nodes, and there is uh, the, the the node is no node is a master, no node is a slave. They all are equal at par, and they communicate to each other like it is just like you end up putting 20 or 30 people in a room and they're blinded. So they start communicating with each other through their uh, by, by sending messages. They understand the position of each other person in the room by hearing their voice, the frequency, the intensity of their noise. Uh, the other person is making the 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 position from there the uh, the uh, the you are receiving those uh, sound waves from there you understand where the location of that particular node is so there are they basically uh, uh, self synchronize themselves they identify themselves they understand each other there is no master who can guide them okay this is with the root or uh, this will be the path which you have to follow. And this is a sink. If there is a sink, sink is a uh, uh, sink is a basically is one of the nodes uh, which collects all the data. So sensor networks, when these sensor nodes collect the data, they have they transmit it to the sink. The sink can be a gateway also, or it can be just a normal sink which can finally transmit it to a gateway. So. So this is a homogeneous sort of a network where all the so, uh, sensor nodes are almost at the par. And there are certain other networks which are heterogeneous networks where certain sensor nodes may ha be having a higher energy or they are having a higher capability. Which instead of saying a higher energy, I would rather use this word higher capability because they will have the capability of processing it in a better form. They will have the capability of having a better memory, better processing speed, Best, better uh, microcontroller and storage spaces, communicating module is good. So these are called the uh, higher nodes. In fact, when we talk about IoT, there are three classes of um, constrained drive devices. This is class zero, class one, and class uh, class two devices. Class zero devices, something like which can communicate to uh, data of up to 10 kbp, kb up to 100 kb, and they use a uh, flash memory and uh, their processor is also very limited and uh, they use various technologies uh, for like bluetooth or uh, wi-fi uh, but when we move on to the class one sort of a node these class one nodes are more enhanced and they have uh, they do not have a complete ip stack uh, because we recognize uh, no uh, an ip stack if you are having an ip stack that means that particular node is able to localize itself is able to find a root. So there is no complete IP stack. It is a rudimentary stack. And they use a certain protocols like MQTTQF, which we are going to talk in the session. So these are the heterogeneous network. And the idea of having a heterogeneous network is uh, the routing rules and other roles can be given to the heterogeneous networks, uh, heterogeneous nodes, which are having the higher capabilities. Then we have a clustered sort of a network. When we have a clustered sort of a network, all these nodes send the data to a cluster head and obviously cluster has to have a higher capability. And these cluster heads uh, communicate to the base station. So this, the nodes, the cluster members form the level one node, cluster head form the level two nodes, and the next level is the base station. You will understand the beauty of these clusters or beauty of this layered or levels if we move on to the fog computing and the edge computing and probably the cloud computing because the concept somewhere you know the uh, 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 the necessity leads to the invention so whenever the modernization happened we had the same concept but it has been incorporated into the present scenarios into uh, wider technologies more capable technologies now there is a long way we have to go we moved on to wired to wireless network, which was using sensor network. And then we have moved to the next generation network, which comprises of Internet of Things. So we are moving, we are taking a journey of IoT. Now, when we are taking this journey of IoT, we need to understand the technology roadmap to IoT. 
we have been studying all these thing in our classes also and we have been teaching all these things but in current current scenarios miniaturization of uh, components the advancement into technologies and uh, right now when we are tele operating with the, having the tele presence their monitors are being located we are having the ubiquitous positioning and then moving into the physical world where where you can uh, we are moving into a scenario where it's internet of everything not internet of things it is internet of everything so every component is becoming connected to the internet every component is being connected to the uh, to uh, the central nodes where you can monitor them do they have their own benefits they have their own demerits we'll be talking about now when we say uh, normally the students and uh, the researchers ask me what is the basic difference when we are talking about wireless sensor network in iot see wireless sensor network is a part of iot or rather iot is they 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 are inseparable in wireless sensor network we tell that the end devices are the sensors but here the end devices are the things and this these things have sensors inbuilt into them these things are smart but besides having the sensors they have a capability of uh, intuitive thinking taking decisions defining rules and communicating so when we talk about data analytics ai machine learning these things can incorporate all of them and these technologies help them to have an intuitive thinking and decision making so sensors became uh, fabricated into the things so that they can provide better applications they differ somewhere in communication technology when we talk about sensor network uh, and a uh, few years back uh, sensor network was prevalent and uh, we we were all doing research on wireless sensor networks the most important uh, area which remained on the research was how to manage the energy because sensor network is constrained have constrained nodes and the network is also constrained so we wanted to work on the uh, managing the energy so we were working on the protocol level reduce the energy on the protocol level reduce energy on the operating system level reduce energy on the you know communication technology level using better protocols or at the storage level we want to reduce the energy with iot the energy constraint may be there or may not be there it may be there if it is iot application is deployed into a scenario whereby uh, uh, like a uh, in a forest it is being deployed and you are managing you are monitoring the health of the whole forest the flora and the fauna of it you know the animal uh, animals you are monitoring over there so there there the sensors will be constrained because they may be battery driven but the same iot if it is working in a hospital management system where they are powered well and they do not have any uh, constraint of the power there they have more capabilities more capabilities require you require more power in that case they differ somewhere in the protocols also and uh, the architecture of wireless sensor network is different from the iot it encapsulates it incorporates the wireless sensor iot incorporates the wireless sensor network architecture but also incorporates certain other layers let's see that before we see that let's see over here if we can see over here these sensors uh, are have been fabricated into these devices and it become things and this sensors may be uh, capturing lot of data temperature humidity pressure liquid level motion shock acceleration and this data is being transferred to the fog computing node now this what is a fog computing node we have been experiencing so much of cold these days and we can see fog everywhere you know so uh, what is this fog and before that let's understand the edge so when we have various nodes into picture these nodes uh, in a heterogeneous network they identify a central node or a node which is having a higher capability as a edge node to transmit their data or it may be a sync node so this edge node transmits the data to the fog node edge node is permeated into the part of it like if you have 100 nodes over there 
there may be one or two nodes which may act as a edge node which may collect all the data and transmit it to the next level so edge node is a part of that same node only node architecture but when it goes to the fog computing we have seen what there is a difference between a fog and a mist fog surrounds us it is not a part of us so the concept of fog came from this place so if we are uh, like in a class you have a monitor that may become an edge node but a teacher may be a fog because it surrounds you provides you lot of information so these fog nodes may be uh, devices of class 1 capability or class 2 capability and they may be the gateways and they extract the information and they also apply the data analytics over there machine learning algorithms over there reduce the data and then compress the data and provide it to the cloud for the storage and from there the applications interact with the clouds and they then they capture the data and they work on the uh, controlling measures we can see it in this form also here we can see the various sensors and the controllers and these sensors and controllers are sending the data large volume of data is going to the edge layer as i just discussed to you and uh, these are the gateways which are using the edge layers and this goes to the fog layer fog layer is basically a server um, which is server or a gateway so the processing is quite fast over here there is standardization data analysis there data reduction is there and when this data is being reduced over here for further processing it moves to the <coughs> cloud and cloud computing is a different domain altogether where the data where data warehousing is being done and then data mining is being done by intelligent uh, business logic and the data processing is being done for the quicker uh, information now this is the layered architecture of sensors versus iot if you see the savala sensor network architecture <coughs> sorry file sensor network architecture you'll find various layers physical layer data link layer network layer transport application layer and um, these layers are uh, managed by the task management plane mobility management power management planes or all these planes are handling this and we have all uh, studied all these things in you know, osi model tcp ip models and all so physical layer uh, for the physical objects the communication between physical objects physical a media data link layer for our uh, uh, for the mac layer protocols for media access error control network layer for routing transport layer and so on so these are the various layers of the sensor network though it is not a full fledged no uh, 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 layered architecture because it is not required over there but when we move on to iot if we see sensing layer it is somewhat your physical layer network layer it is covering almost all these three layers so it is having a data link layer data network layer transport layer a data processing layer over here is for process information which is not being included in the sensor network now this particular process information is using data analytics and decision so all this decision making data analytics is being done by the data processing layer and on top of it the application layer has been again redefined mm. for smart applications and management which is working and taking the information from these uh, smart uh, from this data cloud so if you can this is pictorial representation these are the sensors network layer has gateways they are communicating the data processing layer has got the processing capabilities their cpu and other things are processing this thing and the at the component level uh all these layers are being pointed out this is the component level of this whole scenario now coming on to the protocol once we have understood this particular part we have also understood i am being able to uh, i have been able to make you understand how this uh, to visualize you the whole network architecture you are able to visualize now the whole network architecture which is based on iot or your uh, wireless sensor network now at every layer there are certain protocols which work almost a physical and data link layer there is 802.15.4 bluetooth is there rfid is the wifi is the 3gpp is there and uh, at the network layer transport layer you have zigbee tcp rpl rpl is one thing which i'll be covering um 
and uh, then we have uh, at the application layer we have the http coap so this will be coap uh, mq pretty will be one of the areas which i'll be covering you have already uh, in one of the lectures i heard that you have uh, in fact i attended one of those lectures where you have already discussed the m2m service earlier architectures and one on two m architectures and then applications Uh, so looking at this particular diagram so when uh, the protocols we see different layers in the protocol and we want to see the scenario of iot uh, that the application layer we can see that these application protocols are more prevalent over here these are the application pool coap mqtt amqp xmpp so this is the iot services at the application layer so i'll discuss about this first application layer protocols for the iot so the most popular of the application layer protocols are the coap mqtt xmpp amqp web sockets join and all these things now these protocols basically works in certain fashion they work in a certain communication pattern they have a particular communication pattern of either publishing or subscribing or request or response they may be client server based they may not be client server based so they depends and uh, coap work in a very constrained environment and when we talk about the constrained environment we want to say we we talk about the constrained network and the constrained node that means the node is having we will we'll be talking about constrained node and network but then they have a uh, the, this there is a lossy transmission over here so they work in this particular scenarios mqtt again is a generic uh, protocol which is having a very small header it has got a two bytes of header uh, as compared to coop which is a, and then we have an xmpp this is high memory consumption and http give us a better performance uh, we prefer coop and mqtt because they have a quality of standards qs levels are quality of service levels are there uh in uh, mqtt we have 0 1 and 2 levels of uh, quality so that's much more researched about so we'll be talking about that also if we talk about the iot messaging proso protocols they and categorize them it is like having a synchronous uh, protocol which is having the request and response so this is a server this is a client is the requester over here and uh, server are providing the re response so it is sending the request and server is giving the response in terms of the request this is synchronous response and normally http is based on this then we have asynchronous a coap is based on this protocol uh, mechanism of asynchronous request the client requests the server the server sends an acknowledgement and then sends a response fine and then there is a stream request which is uh, which can be seen by xmpp protocol so uh, here uh, they are not just sending the request and response they establish a connection the client and the server they both establish a connection first they interchange the messages in between and then they go in for a disconnection phase fine so uh, if uh, you go back to your data networks and all So, so there is a uh, you have, must have studied the packet switching, circuit switching, and the virtual packet switching. So, if you talk about the virtual packet switching, it works in that fashion. Then M A M Q uh, M Q D T A M Q P and Coop they works on the subscription and notification form of uh, work. Subscription means the client subscribes to a particular idea. you know so client request that i want to send i want to publish uh, i i want to subscribe to this server sends notification there is notification exchange between the two and this is done by a media this is called a broker there is a broker in between the broker can be a part of the server only so whenever there is some request being sent by the client the broker is one entity which accepts the request and gives the data uh, gives that request and those who want to uh, take that particular request they can take it like if i uh, you have subscribed to a particular magazine fine so you go into a particular show, i want to use the subscription of this particular magazine or this particular journal so they give you a uh, they will keep on providing you that particular magazine mm -hmm. or journal till the time you want to subscribe it 
and we want to end it you can end it but for but here it is more of a uh, thing where you are not showing the interest but the publisher is showing the interest publisher tells okay i have this much uh, i have these all topics which you want to take up these many magazines which i can offer you so the uh, the uh, the 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 other client who wants to subscribe to this particular magazine they can subscribe to it fine so this way the whole system works and this sort sort of mechanism of iot messaging happens in mqtt amqp and qrt qrt let's talk about the mqtt protocol in this mqtt protocol uh, there is an mqtt uh, uh, publisher over here this may be a thermostat and it it is capturing the temperature and it wants to send the temperature to uh, to anybody then this is some it, it's a, it's a type of a node only and there are other nodes which may be interested in getting the temperature and they will forward it further into other network or in the same network so it publishes this data to the mqtt broker now this is the work of the mqtt broker to offer this topic that temperature this much of te the temperature the topic who all are interested in the topic like temperature so these subscriber there are two subscribers and subscriber 1 and subscriber 2 they will send a they will they will accept this offer and subscribe to this information of temperature so mqtt broker will provide will enable this topic to these subscribers so publisher publishes and offers this service to mqtt broker mqtt broker further provides the services to the subscriber those who are interested in taking those services not everybody there may be another node he may not he may send a publish message but he may not be interested he will not subscribe to it so mqtt is a client server publish subscribe messaging transport protocol and uh, it is simple to implement especially at the sensor side and a lot of work has been going on in our mqtt in my lab also and we are developing communication modules on mqtt using android uh, arduino platforms and we have uh, developed the uh, finite state, ma state machine models and mathematical models for mqtt and uh, with the help of these models we are testing them for various uh, uh, technologies which are available we are testing for wifi lora and other and then uh, even we are using different platforms for it we are using arduino we are doing raspberry pi we are different using different different platforms we are using and trying to implement the mqtt the another feature of mqtt is the quality of service support so it is uh, it provides a quality of service support and it has it provides three levels of quality of service support which we'll just see it is quite lightweight and it is band bandwidth efficient and data agnostic so this 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 suits our you know budget when we are talking about class 1 uh, uh, nodes class 1 nodes i uh, told you that uh, they are constrained but their ip stack is not completely developed even class 0 may use mqtt so this is a, a typical architecture where these publishers are publishing different topics to the broker broker has got various topics in hand and it will distribute these topics to subscriber visit, visit the broker and see which all topics i can subscribe so he may be interested in topic 1 or topic 2 so they may subscribe to their various topics so the uh, the, the paradigm will be the communication pattern will happen like this so they are publishing 30 degree centigrade temperature i am going to offer and uh, i'm sending that this is a sensor node which is measuring the thermometer they are got a thermometer and sent, um, measuring the temperature so this is a laptop device and this is the mobile device so this publisher and they both subscribe through this thing here we use a push information paradigm push information paradigm means broker pushes the information to this laptop and mobile and if laptop and mobile are interested in taking this particular information then they will subscribe it they will not keep running to this uh, broker and asking for this pc i am interested in this no so every client publishes 
now this sensor node is publishing right now but it can also become a subscriber it can also become a subscriber so because this is a client this this is a client and this is a client and this is also a client fine and this is the server which is a broker server is a broker here so our server is a broker so these are the clients a client may just publish a client may just subscribe a client may publish and subscribe simultaneously so it can do any of these things so these are the components uh, we the, the same thing the broker receives the subscription from client on the topics and broker receives the message and forwards them client subscribe and publish on the topic so there is a broker actually gives a bridge configuration to the whole system these are the packets we have uh, if we see the packet for format of it there is there is a header which is a two bytes then uh, there is a payload payload can go to around uh, 256 uh, uh, mb of payload we can uh, put over there mb of payload we can provide over here uh, then we have a lot of other uh, for the qs qs levels can be there 0 1 2 then retain the last information we can retain message types so if we see over here that uh, a packet is being uh, sent from mqtt to mqtt broker there is a connection and the connection acknowledgement is there uh, the client id is given a client session you want to create true user name is given a password is given a last will topic last will topic actually is a topic every uh, when mqtt sends a request to the mqtt broker it sends a last will topic that if in case there is a i want to opt for if the, there is a sudden failure in the network or i die out or the network uh, dies out and i am not able to communicate with you in that case you are going to publish this message something wrong this is the last will message something wrong is there you know and i will be kept alive for 30 seconds after that i should be discon from the routing table i should be omitted out so i should be removed from the uh, routing uh, table so last will qs is 1 Q quality of service level we are going to talk about so qs 0 1 and 2 so 1 that means retransmission ha can happen in 1 and 0 there is no retransmission if it has opted for 0 over here there will be no retransmission of it so they specify the last will topic in a, for the emergency situations when the there is disruption in the network this is the correct mes message so this was the connect message fields this was the publish message fields when we publish the message here mqtt broker is client is publishing the message to broker this message has got packet id topic name qs retain flag is fall i want to retain the last information payload is i want to this is the payload this is duplicate flag which i want to send or not find duplicate i receive messages or not and uh, this is these are the various qs the, this is a qs 0 in the qs0 the sender is transmitting the message to the receiver so this is the best effort transfer provided by the underlying transport they will, it will only send the information it will and it will forget about it whether the person the receiver has received it or not it will not send any acknowledgement whether it is received or not it is just send it it may be drop it may not be drop there but there is no guarantee of receiving the message in uh, qs level 1 you have a guarantee of uh you try to uh, wait for the acknowledgement in this particular case the mqtt client stores the message and keeps retransmitting it so mqtt client when it sends the message it still retains the retain field was there if you remember that retains the part of the message last sent it keeps on retransmitting it until the acknowledgement from the mqtt broker is received the publishing acknowledge acknowledgement pub pub back pub acknowledgement is a publishing acknowledgement which if mqtt broker gives this so retain field will be deleted the, the the data in the retain field will be deleted and the new message will be sent and the qs level 2 uh, in our lab we have done the experimentation of qs level 0 1 2 and we have implemented these two uh, all these uh, three levels and our research paper is also on this qs level 0 1 and 2 in the implementation part of it and how it is working for uh, various technologies so in qs level 2 is the highest level of service in mqtt this level guarantees that each message is received only once by the intended receiver uh, and it's the safest and 
slowest quality of service so it will keep on sending the message unless until the pass, the acknowledgement for uh, publishing received has been sent if the publication receive has been sent okay i have received this thing it will keep on send retransmitting it to the sender then this is the mqtt last will message the last will and testament notifies other clients about an hard disconnect by a specific client so there is a hard disconnection happens so each client can specify its last will you know when you write a will uh, you say that after my death this should happen so the broker also writes a will uh, the, sorry the client also writes a will and give it to the broker if i it happen to get disconnected with the whole network scenario please subscribe please send this message to all the clients which are present in the uh, my vicinity fine so basically their mqtt has got four phases the session is established then it is authenticated then there is a data exchange and then the session uh, the session is terminated it works in the four phases it is very difficult to explain the whole phases over here so then uh, mqtt has been modified for sensor network it uses the udp there are various mqtt brokers we have already work on emqt mosquito hi we have worked on these three we have evaluated their performances in our labs for all these things rapid mq is also which which have taken our interest and we have been working on this okay so this is a summary of mqtt that is a published subscribe message and it is a lightweight and uh, it is a client server model i hope you are able to i am able to generate that interest of yours in the mqtt is it am i yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, yes, yes sir yes sir actually i can only see the screen i cannot see anybody of you uh, so, no ma'am we are uh, we are so getting it ma'am imagining that you are there <laughs> you are yes, able to we are there only and you are able to get what i am telling you yeah sure ma'am yes sir yes sir yeah sorry okay. that's right okay the now we move on to this constrained application protocol i think i'll have to hurry up because uh, i'll give you a break and i'll finish this part and then we'll uh, gadri can we have a break after some time after finishing this uh, application layer protocols okay ma'am yeah i will quickly run through this because it will be very difficult to explain that whole all the protocols in detail now this is a coap protocol so coap has got a is a constrained architecture protocol application protocol and is a, it is a specialized web transfer protocol for use of the constrained nodes in the network when we say constrained nodes in the network excuse me ma'am Yes. Then if you want to break for uh, five to ten minutes, uh, please uh, have it. Uh, uh, B teachers do require break for four or five hours also. <laughs> so, okay. 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 Uh, see, the idea is I wanted to just finish up the application, touch on the application layer protocol, fine, fine. in the network, and then finally move on to the applications of uh, architecture and then uh, agriculture, agriculture uh, applications. so i am trying to finish it off fast so that i move on to the next part and before that i'll take a small break if it is comfortable to all the participants yes ma'am you can continue ma'am okay so the, if we see the coap at a glance we have uh, it is a web transfer protocol it has based on the rest architecture it is an asynchronous transmission mod, uh, model it works on uh, get post put delete methods you uh, you get the particular topic you post a particular topic you put it you delete the method and it is a four byte header now uh, here if you see uh, coap basically uses the request response model similar to http but it is designed to be simpler and more efficient it uses the binary encoding scheme and can can be carried over uh, udp uh, tls and it also su supports a multicast communication when we are communicating to more than one users fine right? and uh, this enables it communicating the various nodes in the network so one of the key feature is that we uh, as we have already seen it is a asynchronous communication uh, model where i have already shown you the slide it sends a data it sends a response and then so it can the coap plan can send a request then continue with other task while waiting for the response so it will send the data wait for the response and continue with the other task when the response is received the client can then process it as as needed and this is very much important in the iot scenarios when devices are connected on the low bandwidth because most of the devices in the uh, iot scenario are connected on low bandwidth and unreliable networks so this is required 
it in, it provides support for caching uh, enabling clients to store resource locally so basically uh, the broker which we had in mqtt it buffers the message over there so it also coop itself has a caching facility which enables clients to store resources locally access them without uh, the need to send a request to the server so uh, they can directly communicate with each other so this reduces the network traffic also and improves the performance of the iot systems <clears throat> so to illustrate this whole thing let us come take this particular example of communication model where coop clients wants to retrieve some data from a server so it wants to retrieve some data from the server the client first sends a request message so it sends a request message to the server specifying the uniform resource indicator uri it is sending the uri over here this is the uri it is sending and this uri to of the resource it wants to access the request message includes a number of headers uh, which are there and such as coop version kya hai what is the type of request they have it is a get request it's a coop uh, it's a post request and there is an accept option which is specifies the server receives this particular request and then processes it if the request is valid and the server has requested the resource it will send the response if the request is so this coop client want the temperature of the server and of the bedroom uh, uh, temperature and the living room temperature so there uh, my home by this slash uh, they are sub topics they they select the sub topics so sub topics in in bedroom temperature so this coop server in the over here will tend thermostat in the which is a bed thermostat in the bedroom and thermostat in the living room sends the temperature to the client uh so there is again this response message has got various headers the content format option is also specified over there the client receives the response and processes as per needed as per the requirement it is needed fine so this is the whole scenario whereby the request and response has been done and if you see over the uri there are the sub topics are be uh, mentioned by the slash so this we have talked about reliable exchanges there uh, when there the, there are two modes so it non confirmable message non confirmable message so reliable exchange through confirmable message there should be an acknowledgement over there unreliable exchange through non confirmable uh, confirmable uh, confirmable messages uh, is not sending any response on either acknowledgement it works on a simple stop and wait retransmission and exponential back off schemes so whenever there are uh, it it sends the message stops wait acknowledgement received text this is in the data both have the both the, uh, the, the scope non confirmable messages and confirmable has message has uh, the uh, the quality of duplicate detection i'm uh, uh, omitting this coop messaging versions semantics it will take a lot of time the coop request and response has been uh, shown over there this is the example of the coop the coop is sending the message and uh, this message is received over here and the response this is the token number token 0.0 into 71 this identifies the type of message uh, the message it is something like a message number only this is the separate response and this is the non confirmable response see the client has just sent the message and it will receive it it is not sending an acknowledgement over here okay uh, sometimes there is a packet loss also in the uh, in the whole thing scenario so so this is a stop and wait approach the, there is a packet loss at base for a particular time out so if this after this time out again it is sending the it is asking for the sending the messages so this is there these are the observer modes we will not talk about security we will not talk about yes coop and mqtt there is a mean both are being used uh, primarily but mqtt is preferred because of their different level of services since we have three levels of different levels of uh, classes of uh, iot devices we have class 0 class 1 and class 2 which i talked up in the beginning hence our quality of service will also differ if it is a class 0 we will only opt for a uh, quality of service 0 only but if it is a class 1 we may require at least qs 1 level 
If it is a class two, we will require all these things u zero one and two. So MQTT have an edge over the coep in that form. Otherwise, coep is also preferred uh, usually because of um, the 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 reliable connection which it creates and uh, some persistence which it shows. Then we have uh, another advanced message queuing protocol. This is also an application protocol. Uh, I'll just take this slide in AMKP. So it is a binary application layer protocol, and uh, it is basically it is pre presumptive trustworthy transport protocol, which is again in the publish and subscribe model. It has got a publish and subscribe model. The header size is eight bytes, and uh, protocol stores the data before it is distributed. Thus, it enhances reliability while troubleshooting the network. So basically, what does protocol do is it stores the data, and then it distributes the data. Fine. So uh, it has got three publisher, consumer, and broker. Publisher is are in charge of message ori origination. They originate the message, they send the message. Consumer are used for message collection, and broker plays an important role in this process by ensuring messages are exchanged from the publisher to the client. So the publisher and consumers are being interacted with the help of a broker. Rabbit time. MQ is the broker which we are using over here most of the times. So routing, message orientation, queuing are three most important features. Since they are buffering it, so we have the term queuing. You can see over here these publishers are publishing the messages. They are going to the broker. They are developing queues for it. They are storing the messages and then they are subscribing. So this is the AMQP architecture. Moving on to data distribution services. In uh, data distribution services, this particular protocol is a publish subscribe protocol for, pres uh, for presenting M to M communication, machine to machine communication that have been established by object management group. So they are again they are brokerless. They are uh, DDS is a brokerless design and uses the multicasting for enhanced uh, QS. So DDS supports QS policies by which a variety of communication criteria like security, priority, durability, reliability can be addressed. So it has inbuilt mechanisms and they are used for uh, 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 basically these protocols are used for uh, applications which are uh, required, which require like for the grid application, for medical applications, which are complex applications, DDS is being used. So DDS is mostly used for complex applications because uh, they have much better, uh, they, though they are brokerless, but they have enhanced features for it. So this is, uh, there are a lot of data writers which send the data into a uh, DDS domain and they are data readers, which reads the data as per the requirement. And there you can see the filters over here. So whatever data is being transmitted, you apply a filter to it and then use it. The type of data you want to read, the level of data you want to, the complexity of data you want to uh, capture. So we have completed the application layer. We have talked about the uh, we will not be talking about the proce uh, pr processing layer because there comes the data storage, data analytics, and data management. So all these protocols and services are all cloud-based, which will not remain in the domain area. But uh, definitely, we'll talk about the network layer, uh, network layer, and the perception perceptron layer. In network uh, layer protocols, we have RPL. I'll just talk about the RPL. We have other protocols also, as shown over here, the 6.2 WPA and IPv6, fine. So all these protocols are there. But uh, primarily, RPL is the IPv6 routing protocol for low power, low lossy networks. And uh, it is designed, uh, it is uh, constraints may include, uh, when we say constrained networks, we have, uh, it, the one of the constraint may be the throughput is less. The second constraint may be there may be high packet loss. Or uh, they may be highly symmetric, uh, asymmetric link characteristics, or they may be severe penalty, they may be large packets which may be having severe penalties, or each time is very high. So all these are the constraints. These are the low power lossy networks. So RPL is a distance vector routing protocol and a source routing protocol. What is distance vector routing? They basically uh, it is an inter-domain routing protocol which maintains the distance. It finds out the distance between the neighboring rooms. Fine. So direction usually means the next hop and distance means the measure the co uh, cost. When we say distance, it means the cost to reach a particular certain node. And when we say direction, it means the next hop. So distance vector routing ba is based on the calculation of the direction 
and the distance so every packet which is which is sent which finds out kis direction mein ja raha hai data aur kitne distance pe kis node pe data ja raha hai direction is the uh, node direction jis pe hum data ko send kar rahe hain aur kitne distance pe wo node hai so this is and we try to compute the root it's so so the, the basic uh, purpose of rpl is to find out the end node kahan se start ho raha hai aur kahan what is the destination so this is the destination so this is the source and these are relay nodes in between so see these many relay nodes will be there so how to make my data re reach at the destination that is my concern so i will be cap uh, capturing two things how many next hop is there and how many how, uh, how what is the distance between these so this is the cost distance is the cost that means this cost can be in terms of the objective function so this objective function can be ki link ki quality kya hai तो जिस लिंक की क्वालिटी अनस्टेबल है उसकी कॉस्ट ज्यादा हो सकती है या जो द नोड जिसके अंदर ट्रैफिक ज्यादा है उसकी कॉस्ट ज्यादा हो सकती है सो डिपेंड्स कि आप क्या ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन यूज कर रहे हैं एंड नेक्स्ट हॉप डिफाइंड नेक्स्ट हॉप हम कैसे फाइंड आउट करते हैं विद हेल्प ऑफ अ रैंक इन आर पी एल विच आई जस्ट शो यू फाइन so we basically convert uh, consider a source routing protocol uh, source, source, source routing uh, path here it is a uh, directed acyclic graph dag and this is distance oriented we make a directed acyclic graph you must have studied in your uh, your da and all so directed uh, this is destination oriented so dag routed routed at a single so there is a single destination in this so there can be the uh, dag graph can be in any form but here is a single route in which this a uh, single destination of the dag route so if you say there is a single destination so these are the various rpl instances this is one do dag this is another do dag and it is acyclic that means they, it will not come back to the same node so this is not permissible over here so it is a do dag so these are the unique identifiers rpl instances have various unique identifiers in the objective functions to compute the position you basically the position is computed with the help of an objective functions then we have version numbers of rpl see over here now we also compute the rank see this the the node which is closer to the root is has got the rank 1 the root this is second hop closer to the do dag so this is rank 2 this is rank 3 so there are different ranks to it fine so uh, the 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 nodes which are having the lowest rank if you see will have a bigger routing table because they will be having the information of all these things the nodes uh, the data which is being carried from the rank 2 rank 3 and all so it will have a bigger routing table fine so we do not permit the floating dags and all so there are basically modes in rpl there are three modes one is the storing mode one is non storing mode and storing mode multicast in a storing mode nodes store information about routes to other nodes in the network so they store the information in non storing mode they do not store any information of the routes do not store routing information but instead forward the packet to the destination here there is a uh, there is a border node jitni bhi node ki information ya route hoga wo border node store karti hai in non storing mode storing mode mein har node apna ek routing table store karegi storing mode multicast bhi ek uh, particular mode of operation hai in this mode the rpl protocol is used to support multicast routing multicast routing means one uh, is being uh, one node is transmitting to several instances at particular time it is the packet is sent to group of nodes fine so this sort of three scenarios it works so dodag uh, we send a when we construct so there are two types of message dio and dao so dio message are used and do messages are used for uh, finding out the parent and for finding out the child i have to be quick so this is destination advertisement uh, object uh, we will talk about this particular thing when we have a lab you know in detail we have a lab on 13 where we'll be using quantiki in in quantiki we are we, we have implemented the rpl protocol and with the help of rpl protocol we have done the performance analysis and objective functions were not defined clearly so we have worked on several objective functions we have a paper in an sci index journal uh, regarding this that is got an impact factor of some 4.5 or so for this and if you understand uh, quantiki as such you will be able to 
uh, analyze a lot of uh, protocols. So there are metrics for the node, there are metrics for the state, for energy and the hop count. What that was, uh, hop count is uh, the number of count it is used to uh, transmit the data to the uh, root. Then there are link metrics. There are two types of metrics, node metrics and then link metrics. So link metrics are throughput, latency, link reliability. What is the link color? Link color basically de depends. There are three, four colors that uh, link is workable. It is going to die and, you know, based on their uh, health. Then there is an objective function. It Objective function used to optimize the root. Right? So there are two uh, objective functions which are very much prevalent. Uh, objective function zero and minimum hysteresis objective function. So they both uh, determine the shortest path. I'll uh, share a document of RPL if anybody is interested to understand it much better. And when we will do it on quantity, uh, you can explore it more. And you can do a lot of research in this area. This is the area which is not explored much. This is one area which is not explored. We had taken almost two years to explore it. So then there is minimum rank with hazardous objective function. We select the path with the low, with the lowest path cost. This is for the lowest path path cost, and uh, there we are using DOI informations. They are two different things. So this is the whole mechanism. We RPL is able to detect a loop also. See if you see a D and B are not able to communicate. So the moment so the DIO message which is being exchanged is between them is not exchanged now. So this becomes red, and then. Uh, since uh, now they cannot send it to do, so F becomes a root node here. So this whole, if you see F, G, H, D, they have all gone red. Then F becomes a, uh, the path has been con connected. In fact, I and E, then R, G and H, everybody is being affected over there. So rank is again calculated. If you see, the rank values have changed over the period. And finally, uh, we understand this was the layer which was creating the problem. So this become a hanging, this become this particular things gets cordoned off. This joins I and uh, this A, F, G, H. This becomes one particular section which is sending to LBR and this becomes one other section that way. Moving on to perception, uh, perceptron, uh, perception layer, we uh, in fact has been touched by all the uh, speakers, <coughs> LoRaWAN, wireless protocols, Wi-Fi, ZigBee has been uh, discussed by a lot of uh, speakers. So you can just go through it. I will not uh, discuss it. So these are some of the technologies. I can share these slides because that has been already discussed. NB, IoT, and other NB variants has been discussed. This is the nutshell which we talk about. Every technology. It may be wired, wireless. It differs on the frequency band which they are uh, accessing. It may be 2.4 gigahertz, licensed band, cellular uh, 5G network, and Lobi also said. And then uh, the topologies which are there, different to topologies are being handled by LoRa is in a star, NBIoT star, IEEE 802.11 is star, and so on. They, have, they work in different ranges, medium range to lo lo long ranges to the high ranges, and their data rate may vary. So if you try to develop, I'll give a break of five minutes to everybody because uh, this will be more interesting. IoT architecture, how we are putting those protocols and everything in IoT architecture and how it is benefiting. So that will be another 15, 20 minute session. So I'll uh, give a break over here. Okay, madam. Thank I'll you. give a five minute break over here before we move on to the architecture part, which is more interesting. Okay. And we'll appeal to everybody. And but these technologies which I have talked about to sum up, uh, work is going on in all these things domains from routing protocol to application layer protocol. And there is la vast amount of research which need to be done further, and they have their own problem statements. In fact, in agriculture too, we'll talk about in the next session. Okay, ma'am. At what time should we all join? So, you know, I'll just take 25 minutes. 825. Okay. 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 All participants, please join at A within 825. Don't be late. Thank you.
and uh, ganesh sir will be putting up the quiz at 9 uh, o'clock right yes ma'am yes ma'am i will put okay 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 quiz link ಏನಪ್ಪಾ ಕಂತೆಯೂ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಿದ್ದಿದ್ದೀಯ
எவ்வளவுமா என்ன சமைச்சிரே ஏனாக்கரா ஒழுது எவ்வளவு அவனுக்கு அஷ்டே யாரும் ஒட்ட கிச்சப்படல குரு நீ ஏனே மாடல் நீ சென்னாகிறதோ எல்லாருக்கும் ஒழுது தட்டி கால கால் மடக்க மாடத்தீ <laughs> 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 மாடபக்கு ಈಗ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸರಿ ಸರಿ ಆಯ್ತು ಮನಿ ಕಾಣ್ನ ಸರಿ ಆಗರ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಎಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಯಾ அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் <laughs> <laughs> the same architectures we were talking about sensor network and iot actually go well into the agriculture industry 
So there is an object uh, object layer, which is the physical layer, perception layer, transport layer. Here we see as object layer, there are crops, livestock, and agriculture and machinery. See, it has uh, basically revolutionized the agriculture. Wireless sensor networks and IoT have basically revolutionized the uh, agriculture in terms of managing the precision farming, livestock management, greenhouse automation. All these applications are just name a few. These are technologies which we are using in agriculture. We have discussed them. Now, in domain of sensor and IoT, the work is going on. We are using sensors and IoT for tracking, for controlling, and for monitoring. Seventy percent of the work is going on monitoring areas. Twenty-five in controlling, and tracking is five percent because mobility in agriculture is limited. And if we see the agricultural applications. Uh, which are utilizing iot and wsn 5% of the uh, applications are using uh, out of the 100% of the things 5% are catering to the air monitoring then humidity monitoring 11% temperature monitoring 12% soil monitoring is 13% and uh, precision farming is taking up 16% of the gamut of whole iot share and uh, then the disease monitoring water monitoring controlling fertilizer monitoring and government is giving lot of grants in this particular areas for the research we have various sensors which are we have already discussed these sensors if you see as animal mo information monitoring system if you see over here so the they uh, the poultry farms which we have so we have got gas sensors over there we have a feeding system water feeding system for those uh, chickens who are there we are maintaining managing their temperature are they comfortable they are not comfortable because the growth of the chickens will depend on their uh, water feeding system the temperature and their food and everything so these the, all this information through camera uh, and through temperature sensors are being private to iot nodes and then it is going to the gateway which is where we are monitoring the whole uh, things so we can control the whole uh, animal uh, poultry farms from uh, with the help of iot if you see here in the plant life information monitoring these iot nodes are uh, monitoring the health of the plants the nutrition part of it and all uh, these uh, the moisture part of it and uh, the chemicals into it the diseases which they are having so everything is being monitored and they are being used further we are working on machinery iot monitory agricultural machinery these there are smart tractor systems these smart tractor systems are basically working into the fields whereby we can uh, find out which all fields need to be navigated which all fields need to be plowed where uh, the the level is uh, less which need to be plowed again so all these things are happening with the help of this uh, monitoring system then this is uh, agricultural machinery moving further if and if we combine all things i just wanted to show you this particular chart the iot the work in agriculture which is going on is in systems management on the sensors part bio sensors ph sensors pir sensor moisture sensors so we are different, developing different types of different sensors actuators the work is uh, going on the data acquisition protocols lan based protocols ethernet wlan wireless access network wan uh, based protocols 2g 3g 5g networks nb iot lora so all these work is going on over here here we are having all the applications which work is crop production analysis profit loss predictions uh, uh, and image processing weather predictions farm management analysis modeling simulations everything is going on in this data, data acquisition layer in the common platforms edge computing models are being developed cloud computing models are being developed in uh, predictive data analytics is being uh, deployed with the help of the big data so with the help of the predictive analysis we are able to monitor and control and analyze the health of the systems in the data processing part we are using uh, the images video images we are using the data mining system decision support systems 
and finally in data visualization we are making charts out of it and we are using the fertilization control pest control greenhouse and uh, field location and tracking so this whole framework tells us in various areas how iot and sensors have permeated and the research which is going on in these areas this is an experimental test bed for a smart farm with end to end iot platform so this is the energy system we have been working on the energy energy harvesting system these are the solar panels we have also dis, uh, devised i'll just show you the work uh, we have also devised uh, thermoelectric generators and uh, and rf energy harvesters which rf energy is a perpetual energy which is available fine so we can harvest that particular energy and our paper is in internet of things journal on rf energy and we are and we have also filed a patent on that and the patent is already published and for similarly for thermoelectric uh, um, harvester we are working out to uh, save the energy we using the 10 gram of water and the cost of that device is almost just uh, 60 70 rupees only so the cost is much not much so you that can be deployed in deserts and other agricultural areas and uh, we can uh, uh, overcome the challenge of uh, perpetual lifetime uh, you know uh, limited lifetime of the sensor nodes or iot nodes so that work is also going on now uh, the smart farm prototype is being developed over here and there is a monitoring uh, of the whole system with the water system is being monitored using the irrigation control system is there if you see in this picture so iot based products and prototypes which are available right now there are spraying robots which are able to spray chemicals to the fields so these are the drones so and uh, one of our cell in uh, gautam buddh university we are having a drone center uh, where uh, we are training the pilot drone pilots we are providing training for the drone pilots and we are also uh, doing research on uh, various different types of drones so and they are used for several purposes for monitoring they are they are monitoring robots we have developed those monitoring robots there we have also developed the spraying robots uh, then we have got the harvesting robots which are so uh, these uh, putting the seeds through uh, the drones we can do that also then the crop assessment of the health uh, this is one work though we are not working on the crop assessment of cell one of our phd students is working on the crop assessment of health bug detectors seeds and fertilizers what is the quantity of seeds required what is the quality of fertilizer now what is the ph level of the soil all these things are the production prototypes which are available in the market and we are also developing it then for end to end communication we have uh, all these technologies uav is again the backbone we this is one backbone which is uh, unarmed vehicles is becoming very prominent these days and especially for the agriculture industry the crop sensors soil sensors environmental sensing layer pe hai bridge layer pe wifi rf rfid ya zigbee is working and uh, backbone layer pe your uab base station gsm wagera we already know it works but uab is coming up in a big way at the end layer we have scada databases so this is the type of typical agricultural drones uh, this is the fixed wings drones and they are multi rotors they are multiple rotors machines uh which are there which are monitoring the fields and finding out that we are also developing the topographic graphs out of it so if you are interested you can visit our labs and we can show you that of that particular area now the major challenge for sustainable future agriculture see by 2050 we are going to need 56% more food than what we are having right now so our requirement is going to increase heavily and it is increasing with the type of population growth is there so and the the earth's vegetative land is quite limited currently we are using only 50% of the vegetated land so we will be requiring 593 million hectare more land will be required and we will not be able to sustain that so we are moving on to vertical farming means the same farm we are using it vertically the same farm area we is using it vertically to uh, put up our crops then uh, we require more resources in terms of water everything you know and the third major important challenge is that we have to reduce the carbon emissions so we require smart farming urban agriculture 
and uh, the resilient uh, crop breeding into the coming times because if we do not handle the things right now and we do not look into the system right now we are going to uh, falter in future and the future is definitely dark for us with the time of these uh, years we are having an uh, more uh, mouths to feed so these are uh, some of the uh, some lot of work has been taken from my paper and the book also i will just show you the research work which we are uh, carrying on Uh, uh this is uh, one of the organization marvino technologies where one of my student is working with us and we have developed uh, solutions <laughs> these are industrial automation solutions we have developed and this is the work which is going in smart city area using iot we have not touched upon agriculture much yes but we are working on the drones aspect of the agriculture so this is the work which we are going and the products are available in the market and uh, in in the all lot of uh, users are there which are using these uh, smart switches and all and the whole uh, home they are they have automated and uh, as compared to the chinese market these products are very cost effective and the, the reliability is also very good so uh, these are the solutions we are big, uh, talking about and these are the solutions i told you about the rpl this is the paper critical analysis of rpl objective functions and iot this is in the peer to peer network application uh, uh, journal here we have discussed various objective functions about the iot Uh, this is another paper, which is a novel thermoelectric energy harvester for wireless sensor network application. This I have already told you that uh, uh, we have developed a th thermoelectric energy harvester, which is which uses only 10 gram of water, and this 10 gram of water is able to, uh, you know, uh, harvest energy to provide a perpetual lifetime to a sensor node. We calculated uh, the the energy required by a sensor node. with a duty cycle where which is uh, which is event based the sensor will work on the event based system so this uh, thermoelectric uh, energy harvester is, is able to provide that plus it is also able to provide us energy both in the daytime and the night time because there is a phase change material is there so the inner side of that uh, teg module get heated up at the night time the reverse uh, cycle develops so this is able to provide and the patent is there for this uh this particularly i want to show you it's uh, this paper is with gayatri uh, madam and uh, we have developed we have worked on the mac layer protocols for machine critical applications now machine critical applications are very very important because in hospitals and uh, the persons there the health monitoring application somebody has been having a cardiac arrest so you cannot wait for those uh, you know uh, to reach out to, uh, as a help to that particular patient so you have to in very efficient protocols of mac layer mac is for media access control protocols so the mac layer protocols have been very efficient to reach out to those patients so these are the mission critical applications and uh, this is again a paper in the elsevier <coughs> this is a paper on mqtt and node mcu Uh, this paper has uh, we have uh, this is this is a good number of citations because the communications model were not developed so far for mqtt using node mcu or other arduino but in this paper we have developed all the models for mqtt and we have test our test bed has been provided for this fine and the results have been analyzed in this particular paper so these are the results how the publishing data of mqtt server works fine so we have used in the hive mq broker over there and uh, the data has uh, we have been able to capture those data then uh, another work which we are concentrating on uh, is uh, these are some then uh, then this marvino technologies yes, yes uh, definitely uh, so there is a certain other work which we are working on and uh, which in coming times we will uh, be presenting 
and uh, similarly we are integrating drones with iot technologies and let us see where the future beholds for us and what we tend to do so this is all about uh, the talk though i have tried to minimize it as much as i can and there is lot more to be discussed but still you can reach out to me you can take my from gayatri ma'am my number and email id and i'll always respond thank you so much thank I you ma'am i am ma'am also gayatri ma'am also and other faculties who have coordinated whole the whole things and the uh, convener of this fdp for uh, organizing such a wonderful uh, fdp and i was part and parcel of it throughout the journey and remain to be a part of it <laughs> i promise to be a part of it thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you and uh, thank you ma'am any questions good evening ma'am i have a question yes uh, ma'am we in terms of hardware we want to uh, take up any sensor node for to, to, for the optimization of crow field what should be the ideal components of uh, uh, any wireless sensor node in terms of sensors also uh, what type of sensor we can use in uh, to optimize the crow field Let's see uh, talking about the hardware uh, i have told you in the very beginning there is no custom tailored uh, solution for any iot uh, scenario there is no custom tailor if i am talking about a crop field what is the application what will the application do what you know i have to get detail of everything i have to get the detail of uh, will it do the soil monitoring will it do the moisture monitoring or what all things will be required what all types of sensors will be required then i'll decide on that what will be my communication technology where will be my control center like we developed a device we developed a device for uh, the farmers in which uh, see now the farmers what they have to do is they have to start their motor you know whenever the uh, level of water in the field decreases so uh, and they are sitting at their home so there has to be some uh, sensor which is monitoring the moisture content of the soil and that should come to the mobile fine so it will come to it, it is a simple application which you can also develop fine and uh, you using an iot gateway and you using a simple sensor you can use it with an arduino also in that case you can use a node mcu in that particular case and attach a sensor to it and plug it onto your sensor field and use a wifi or you use a uh, iot gateway uh, which or and uh, using a wifi technology you, if you have a wifi router over there so you can transmit the data or uh, th Uh, through that so it depends it depends on the application so there is no custom tailored uh, thing we have to there you this thing uh ma'am i want to ask about the routing protocol uh, if uh, i implement a routing protocol then which simulation tool is best for uh, simulating that routing protocol so Uh, see there how can i see net sim is there yes net sim is there which is very good uh, we have been exploring lot of things we have been exploring matlab also we have been exploring net sim also uh, we have also worked on contiki and we found contiki also very versatile because contiki the best part of contiki is contiki ke sath aap kuja is a simulator which is being used over there and we can attach the sensor node directly to the, uh, the to the system and we can take the actual reading real time reading from them so that is also very good we will be holding the session and we'll be sending a video uh, to everybody or a, a slides whereby how to download the contiki how to configure the contiki contiki you have to pre download it and configure it in your system and then come to the labs then only you will be able to otherwise installing a contiki requires almost a lot of times 5 6 hours at times if you have a good bandwidth so that is also applicable so during the lab sessions you can explore various tools okay thank you thank you ma'am ma'am one more one question from my side 
Yes. How to how to find the packet losses? How many uh, loss? How many packets are lost per second? How to find any other way? Packet loss in where? 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 In, in uh, so for example, sensor to the uh, gateway uh, while sending the informations. How many packets lost per second? How to find this one? See what we did uh, when we were working on this our project of Arduino uh, and uh, Arduino using the Arduino and Raspberry Pi and we were working with the MQTT protocol. So we developed a scenario. We used a simple PC and we attached the Node MCU to that, and uh, we attached it to the cloud, right? And from the cloud, the number of publishing messages which they were publishing, we were getting directly from the the number of messages they were being published. Because the MQTT was using a publish and subscriber model, yes, those messages we were uh, recording over there, and uh, the destination may be somewhere else. There yes, may be some other subscriber in some other node. Yeah. So there, again, there is a, a message. Fine. So we were comparing it on the cloud itself. Okay. And from the cloud, we were getting how much packet loss was there. Okay. So at times when we used to run a run a real time scenario, it used to take an hour after that. Uh, the 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 message used to be uh, we, yes, we used yes. to get that yes it was received but it was a delay yes, because ma'am. the brokers are actually doing what they are they are buffering the messages yes ma'am they don't whenever you get connected you, you the message will be trans transmitted sometimes there is a low lossy network and there are a lot of uh, noise impairments in the net traffic as there so there you cannot test that yes so but finally it gets delivered okay. so it depends on a lot of factors but yes we were able to get it from the cloud. Okay, thank you. Directly. Any other query? No, ma'am. Gaitri, ma'am. Gaitri, ma'am. Now she is there. Okay. She is there. Yes, uh, uh, my screen is visible or not? Yes, no. ma'am. You, you can share, ma'am. Uh huh. Okay. Just wait. Good sir, we yes. can we have a group photograph also after this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes. We have to. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, uh, uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there? there was a message written on the group in the WhatsApp group just now. I saw you written something regarding a discussion after nine. Huh? Uh, we have to stay here only, or yes, uh, yes ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am. Here only. Okay. Here only. Okay. And uh, I didn't exactly understand the task. It said something mm -hmm. regarding reflection. Yes. 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 We'll discuss. We will, uh, After we'll discuss the question right. session, okay. we'll discuss. We just continue after nine. I mean, we have to do nothing. We just have to stay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. All right. Yes. So thank you very much, ma'am, Sridushi, ma'am, and this is a small token of uh, honor from our side, ma'am. So kindly so accept much. this. Thank you so uh -huh. much. And uh, uh, this is a, a certificate of honor, ma'am, and from our team. So uh, this is the and special thanks and appreciation uh, to you, ma'am. And uh, thank you very much for uh, gracing this session with your presence, ma'am. So thanks. Thank you very much. Thank thanks you. for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to speak in this particular session. And thanks all the yes. participants for, uh, though I was not able to justify much on the research part of it because uh, of the time constraint, but you are always welcome to uh, have a dialogue with me on any of these topics. Thank you so much. Yeah, ma'am. Can we have a group photograph, ma'am? Yes. Yes, we can have. Okay. So, uh, participants who can switch on their cameras, kindly switch on. Okay. Smile, please, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please thank you, ma'am. Thank you also. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vidushi, yes. ma'am. All participants will stay here. Yeah. Thank you, Vidushi, ma'am. And you, ma uh, thank all you participants much. will stay.
मैम स्टार्ट करें डिस्कशन यस 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 ओके सो आई थिंक ऑल दी पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर हेयर एंड आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से दैट आई हैव शेयर वन असाइनमेंट विद ऑल ऑफ यू सो दैट असाइनमेंट वील डिस्कस इन दैट असाइनमेंट वॉट वी आर एक्टिवली एक्सपेक्टिंग फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ यू सो जस्ट वेट आई विल शेयर दैट असाइनमेंट Yes. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. I think my screen is visible now. Ha, huh. yes. Okay, so my screen is visible. so this assignment carries 15% of evaluation uh, of the atal fdp so the instructions to the participants actually this part uh, this uh, assignment is based on paper 1 and paper 2 i have shared in the whatsapp group also i have mailed to all the participants this paper 1 and paper 2 actually paper 1 was too uh, big so it was not coming in the whatsapp so i have mailed all the, both the papers and assignment to all the participants now we have divided the 50 participants in teams so we are having two teams uh, we are having uh, 10 teams and the team list also i have circulated on the whatsapp group i think everybody has seen that shall i show it here too yes ma'am uh, uh, nahi bhaitri madam ek minute uh, please show the uh, show the uh, points uh, show the points okay. in under the heading uh, Uh, the headings uh, under which they have to write the yes ma'am that i am showing that i am showing but i just want to ask them whether they have seen the team list or not okay yes we I have, have seen yes ma'am they have seen okay we so seen. Uh, yeah we are having team 1 to 5 and that will work on article 1 that is paper 1 and team 6 to 10 they have to work on article 2 that is paper 2 okay and hence all the team all teams need to fill the below form based on that paper 1 and paper 2 so these are the headings these are the headings under which we you need to fill the form like summary of article 1 so you will put here team number and each team has to fill so first starting is key principle practices from the article 1 so key principles and art, uh, practices what are the like uh, uh, you will read paper 1 and whatever all the concepts and practices they have uh, uh, paper have discussed you have to note down only 3 4 points every uh, team okay and then application of those principles you can take from the paper or you can take uh, beyond the paper also and that should show the uh bridging the gap between theory uh, means that is bridging theory with practice so how they are practically implemented La now if some simulation tool is discussed in the paper or in uh, some hardware is discussed in the paper so you have to tell that whatever uh, concepts and principles that paper discusses how they are going to be actually they real time how they are working so the, you have to show, show certain hardware setups or some only any one three four lines you need to write how you are going to implement that in practice and then take aways from the article 1 or article 2 uh, according to the uh, like our team 1 to 5 they are working on article 1 so take aways so what are the things you have you have uh, learned from the article and uh, only three four lines you need to put uh, in this form okay so everybody need to put three four lines only so that is not a big task and uh, 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 team wise it has to do so uh, like one team is having uh, five members so we are having 10 teams of 50 participants so everybody has to do five th five people they need to do this work so i think that they will do it by tuesday and uh, same for article 2 so the same work and same uh, heads now after that article 1 and article 2 reading you have to uh, come on to the fdp reflection journal format so every one as an individual has to do it that is not the team work that is an individual form you have to fill so here you have to write your name 
identify three key learnings from the fdp okay fdp means total sessions whatever sessions are there on the uh, online whatever concepts are discussed whatever are, are the outcomes you have to take any three okay and those three key lessons concepts and ideas that you will implement like uh, means let us suppose we are having the labs so whatever theory you have learned you have to uh, like you have to ask our lab persons that we are we want to implement that how we are going to implement and if some implementation is done then you need to write it here okay so that ways uh, i think uh, this uh, means we we have to uh, 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 implement that concepts okay and uh, last one is the share and implementation plan of your three key lessons or concepts so how you are going to implement it in your college or in your projects okay so these are the things any questions from any participant uh, ma'am do we have to uh, give this finally in soft copy or uh, yes. do we yes ma'am in soft copy you can give but i think uh, this uh, ma'am batayengi cd ma'am uh, print out uh -huh. lena hai ya <coughs> मैम इसमें एक गायत्री मैं भी एक मिनट शेयर कर सकती हूँ गजरा हाँ कर दीजिए मैम 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 एक मिनट मैं कैन वी हैव द नंबर्स ऑफ द टीम हाँ ये मैं कैन शेयर द डिटेल्स ऑफ द टीम मेंबर्स इज शेयर आई एम शेयरिंग आई एम शेयरिंग आई एम Ma'am, can you see the teams? Team ah, one, yes. team two, yes, yes, team yes. three, team four, team five, team six, then team seven, team eight, team nine, and team ten. So these yes. are the ten teams, and uh, the email IDs are already shared with phone numbers in the group. Okay. Okay. So and okay. yeah. Okay. So this these two things only we want from your side. Okay. And presentations will be there on day one and day uh, day two and day three. presentations will be there so this fdp reflex journal format uh, this will be discussed and the article will also be discussed in the presentation so only 15 15 minutes presentation will be there from each team okay now over to cd ma'am ha uh, gayatri ek minute share the uh, schedule you okay. have the final schedule na no? please share okay okay i'm sharing just wait schedule <laughs> Yes, this is the ah, schedule. Yeah. Uh, off, uh, please come offline. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, dear participants, so we have an inauguration session on ninth offline. So registration will be done from eight thirty to nine a.m. So all are requested to uh, please come to the college, our college, JSS City, Noida, in between eight thirty to nine. Please uh, uh, do the, complete the registration process. and uh, by 9 o'clock sharp we will start the inauguration 9 to 9:30 we'll have the inauguration and then from 9:30 onwards we'll have the session on the by the uh, mr manvin singh gayatri ha right so thoda sa isko bada karoge gayatri so uh, all are all are uh, all are requested to join the inaugural ceremony from 9 to 9:30 and registration from 8:30 to 9 नाइन ओ क्लॉक के बाद में रजिस्ट्रेशन डेस्क विल बी क्लोज विल हैव टू क्लोज क्योंकि इनोग्रेशन सेरेमनी विल बी स्टार्टेड सेकेंड थिंग आफ्टरनून विल हैव द इंडस्ट्रियल विजिट सो इंडस्ट्रियल विजिट फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल विजिट वी आर गोइंग टू सुरभि सेट कॉम प्राइवेट लिमिटेड इट इज इन सेक्टर इलेवन नोएडा यू कैन सर्च इन नेट अबाउट द डिटेल्स ऑफ सुरभि इट इज द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स टेलीकॉम प्रोडक्ट्स मैनुफैक्चरिंग कंपनी एंड वील गो फ्रॉम द कॉलेज at 1 pm around and will come by maximum by 4:15 or jis kisi ka aas pass nikal jane ka hai wo they can go directly from the surabhi so we'll circulate a uh, uh, all all it is mandatory to go to the industrial visit abhi tak hum log bachcho ko le jate hain bachche enjoy the visit together ab hum sab faculty member chalenge and we'll explore the things there in the surabhi electronics so i expect that all you uh, participants we have managed uh, we have arranged a bus for 50 participants and we all will go together uh, for the surabhi electronics industrial visit 
Is it fine to all? Yes, May I hear from one or two? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, could you? Uh, I mean, some of us are from Delhi, so if you could share uh, the possible route or something, if not today, at uh, least on that day. So ma'am, this is a, to... our college is in sector sixty-two, Noida. So you can directly come by the metro. Metro is sixty-two, uh, sixty-two, fifty-nine, twenty-two. Uh, These are all the various stoppages of the metro. Okay. No, okay. no. That 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 um, I found out. What okay. I meant was uh, on the way back from Surabhi. Uh, if okay. So we, ma'am, uh, madam, we today, all will be there. Not today. That day itself. Ah, yes, yes. Whenever we are coming back, yes. if yes, we could yes. find out what is yes, the possible definitely. route, then yes, we will be yes, able to yes. um, ah. get out. Uh, and uh, 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 by four o'clock, uh, you leave. But we will come back by maximum by four fifty. It is uh, five to ten minutes uh, uh, travel time from our college to Surabhi. Ah. Okay, so it's directly, nearby. Ah, so yes. Guru, it said Gurugram. That's why I thought. But just Surabhi Noida now. Fine, fine. Oh, Surabhi Noida. Then Noida only. Yeah. Surabhi okay. Noida. Okay. So then, then we can go from college itself. Then. Ah, it's, yes, yes. It is very near, and, ah, uh, uh, maximum by four o'clock. Okay. 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 ये जो आर्टिकल डिस्कशंस का एस गायत्री मैडम इज डिस्कस आर्टिकल डिस्कशन विल बी विल बी फ्रॉम 12 टू 1 ऑन द सेकंड डे एंड थर्ड डे सो इट विल बी अ गुड जर्नी फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस वी विल सिट टुगेदर विल डिस्कस द थिंग्स एंड विल कम अबाउट द सम प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट समथिंग सो व्हेनेवर ऑल द फैकल्टी मेंबर विल सिट टुगेदर डेफिनेटली देयर विल बी सम गुड आउटपुट विल बी देयर and uh, then uh, uh, mcq uh, assessment 2 will be taken place on uh, uh, second last day from 12 to 1 and then the valedictory will be the last one but the complete schedule is shared to you all so please enjoy the fdp please participate your cooperation is very much required as and per the guidelines yes one thing more i want to say, yeah. yes. more, want to say that the uh, these hands on sessions will be very uh, like very informative and uh, i will suggest all of you that just uh, make your presence all the days like uh, from uh, first day to the last day yes okay any query from anyone thank you very much thank you all good night ma'am stop night, sharing ha yes yes okay okay good okay. night ma'am ha good night bye okay good night ma'am good night bye 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 bye. Ma'am, these presentations night, are individual or uh, they are in team? No, the presentations will be in team. Presentations will be in team, but reflex journal uh, that everybody has to individually submit. Uh, hello. Uh, yes. yes. Ma'am, uh, yes, uh, that reflex journal has to be submitted by the end of the uh, this uh, FDP yes. or. And Last uh, day. Maybe first day से पहले एक दिन कर दीजिएगा. So we will prepare 12. the reflex journal. Yes. Okay. Up to twelve. हमें reflex January. journal prepare करना है. आप लोगों के जो आप लोग form yes. submit करेंगे उससे. Yes, ma'am. Up to twelfth January I will fill. Oh, yeah. Twelve will, to thirteen. Submit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you, ma'am. And ma'am, uh, what is that regarding the second question that you were telling that it is a uh, uh, needs to be implemented into lab. So it will be uh, we oh, need to uh, implement it into the JSS lab. Yes. Yes. Yes, JSS Labs. Uh, la like uh, uh, Mr. Subramanya is coming, uh, so uh, Laura Van Kit he will be giving you the workshop detail uh, uh, for two days. So whatever concepts are discussed in the paper, you can ask him uh, like one or two small projects he will implement, and that you can write in your paper. On third day, uh, on third day we'll have the lab view uh, for IoT and WSL. the different modules of the on the of the lab view will be discussed and will be the the uh, this using the device drivers and all uh, you will run the software software and the small project on the lab view based on iot and ws oh. and then on the, on the fourth day uh, we'll have guys madam bataiye ma'am in the uh, reflex journal actually uh, in the fourth day the, uh, fourth day ka, fourth day ka software bataiye fourth day Yes, fourth day. Me, quantity software will be there, and Dr. Vidushi Sharma will come with her uh, 
PhD student and they are going to uh, give us the uh, how we are going to install the Conteki Kuja software and uh, how we are going to simulate the uh, wireless sensor nodes for different applications. So Conteki Kuja software will be there uh, by Dr. Vidushi Sharma and uh, Niti Gupta. Ma'am, for Facebook. this offline session also, there will be recording because sometimes they uh, yes, uh, yes, teach us yes. the methods because uh, we need to look uh, those methods again or their procedure again. Mm -hmm. So we'll be recording and, and mm -hmm. we, if we need to see these recordings, we we'll, will be available. To Mani, us. sir, that is available in YouTube uh, link. That link already shared. No, no, he is asking no, 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 about the offline session. It is the offline we will provide, sir. Recorded recording we will of provide. desktop material, Anna Gayatri. So Haan, we man. will we will have it. We'll have it. Okay, we will try to provide the offline recording also, but it is too long. Like pura session hoga sir, subeh se leke shaam tak ka. So dekhte hain kitna ham log de paate hain na. Wo depend karta hai, but uh, we will. Jaise ma'am, uh, jo important procedures hote hain, jaise quantity ki soft uh, quantity ki software hai, to inko kaise install kare? To iske uh, there Main, are sir, ha ha. Yes, Manish sir, वो जो है ना instructions वो हम अभी भी मैं WhatsApp group पे भी मैं paste करूँगी जो Monday के लिए जो तो चाहिए नहीं कुछ but Tuesday और Wednesday के लिए कुछ instructions आए हुए हैं कि आपको laptop में लेके आना है वो डाल के install करके वो मैं दे दूँगी और उसके बाद add one instruction regarding laptop लेके आने की laptop लेके आना है सबको please because it is hands on lab so everybody should have yes one thing one thing we would like to say that we have arranged 50 desktop terminals in our uh, computer lab and simulation lab, right? But if you bring your laptop, then it will be convenient for you to uh, do the work and it will be with you only. That will be with you. Yes. With you. Yes. So uh, um, it is preferable, preferable if comfortable, you feel comfortable, to bring <coughs> your laptop. Okay? Otherwise, desktop is there. All the things uh, system is updated and all the things whatever is required is uploaded there in the desktop. That all preparation homework we have done. But if you have a laptop, then you will have to do it. 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 So, you will have to do it. You will have to do it. You will have to do it. Okay. Any other query? Okay, thank you. Ma'am, I'm Yetish here. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, as you know, I'm on leave uh, uh, from uh, yesterday. Uh, so I'm attending from Mysore today. Uh, hmm. Monday and uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, I may not be able to attend. So hmm. you put me in the team. So that's why I wanted to inform. Okay. Uh, 